Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. Hi right, guys, it's another fun painting for my first time at Painters. So grab your supplies. There is a traceable available um, for the middle step. So grab that if you need it. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. So here we're going to start with the background and we are using our large brush and we're going to make a light to medium blue. And you do have full permission to switch out colors to make these your favorite colors if you want to do sunset or all blue, uh, whatever you feel like doing. And here I'm demonstrating three different brush strokes that you can try. And it doesn't matter which brush stroke that you use, just kind of play with it and get comfortable with applying the paint, what it feels like when you move the brush. For this particular painting, I'm gonna keep kind of long horizontal brush strokes, kind of using the full width of the canvas. But if you chose one of the other brush strokes or brush mark making, um, just stick with whatever you feel comfortable. Now you can see that I am blending my light blue a few times. And this is good practice for you. We're going to start with this light blue and go darker as we move towards the top. So here I'm grabbing some of that direct blue, um, painting a little bit on top of the light blue and blending in with it. This helps. This is called wet on wet blending. And if you're painting on canvas, if you can see the texture of your canvas, maybe apply your paint a little bit thicker and it'll make your process and blending a little bit easier. So now I'm into the direct blue as I just kind of keep making my way up the top of the canvas. Now we're going to be mixing blue and purple. Your call how much of each color. Again, just kind of play with it. And for today's painting, I am painting on um, watercolor, thick, heavy watercolor paper, and I have the edges taped. And it's just so that way I can make more of these videos and not go through tons and tons of supplies. So watercolor paper, heavy watercolor paper is an option for those of you that want to paint more regularly, but don't want to stick with the canvas or the canvas panels. So here moving into a bit more of that direct purple as we go darker. And if you want more purple in yours or different colors, again, adjust this to what you want and utilize the video as just a simple guideline but full permission to deviate and make this painting your own. Now, if you do happen to be on a stretched canvas, I do recommend carrying your color around the edges of the canvas while you have your paint and that color on there uh, on your brush. And it just makes it look nice having the color wrap around the edge. If you forget to do that, you can always paint your edges later and you can always paint them a solid color. So now that we have the background done, this is a good spot to pause the video and take a progress photo. You want your uh, background to fully dry before you add the stars. And we're using two brushes, the large brush with a lot of water and white paint. You do want it pretty liquidy. And then we're going to use the second brush and tap that first brush on there and the dots will fall. Um, and you can see as I kind of move it around. Now this will splatter a little bit, so make sure this, that you're doing this outside or in a place that if you get a little bit of spray on the wall or something, um, it's either easy to clean up or it doesn't matter. So kind of think about your environment before you do this splatter effect. Now if you do want to do this with a light yellow or different color, feel free to do that. And just kind of play with it. It's fun. You can have as many stars on there as you like. And if you are one of my beginner painters, remember to breathe, relax. You're doing a great job. All right, so a good spot to pause the video, take a progress photo. Again, fully let this dry, and we're going to move into black paint. And I do want you to pause the video as much as you need, or you can go grab that traceable and transfer it to the surface. I do recommend that you go ahead, push yourself, and try to uh, follow along visually with what you see me doing and I am making a dot on the left hand side of the canvas about two inches up and then another dot on the right hand side of the canvas about an inch down and kind of creating a nice little platform that we're going to put cathedral rock on here 
and this is a very famous Sedona rock formation. I used to live in Sedona and lived at the base of this mountain, and it was amazing to hike. And it is one of the most photographed rock formations um, in Arizona, or at least in Sedona. I was going to say, I have a feeling the Grand Canyon probably gets photographed more. But you're just going to fill this in and again, carry that color around the edges of your canvas if you're on a stretched canvas. And pause the video as much as you may need to. This, I did not time lapse this one. I did not speed up the video. I painted this pretty quickly and I think it's about an eight minute video um, as far as my painting. So you do not have to paint as fast or as slow as I am. Take this at your pace. Take any of my videos at your own pace and you are learning via the power of observation. You're looking at the video, uh, kind of digesting what you see and then translating it to your canvas at home. And this is a skill that the more that you use it, the better you get. So if you don't want to use the traceable and you want to kind of go, um, Step by step, I am using that middle brush. We're gonna start in about the middle. We're gonna start with one of the smaller rock formations and kind of creating a tiny little square there and then a smaller space above that. And again, pause the video as needed. I realize there is a bit of a glare and reflection. So you can even forward the video and pause it where you don't have that reflection or reference the traceable. So now we're doing that middle shape to the left of the first shape that you did. It's a little bit taller. Um, and I'm just going to kind of draw the outline so you can see that for all the shapes that we're making. You are also more than welcome to um, Google Cathedral Rock Silhouette, Thunder Mountain Rock Silhouette. You can actually do any of the rock formations in Sedona and just kind of switch out uh, at this point for where uh, you're at in the video. And then we do have one more formation. Here we go on that right hand side. And again, pause the video, do a screenshot of it. You can zoom in a little bit closer to see some of the shapes and the angles. And I actually would recommend doing this on a scrap sheet of paper before you do it on your canvas. And by doing it on the scrap sheet of paper, it actually allows your background time to dry. So that way you're still being creative and then filling in the space and adding whatever you may like extra to your painting. All right, and as you do any of this, if your brush is kind of shaky, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. I am really proud of you guys for painting. Um, we will be putting a moon in the background here in a moment. And your call if you want to do a full moon, a crescent moon, no moon at all. If you want to put some shooting stars in there, anything you want to do. If you want to throw some birds in the sky, feel free to do that. But trust your instincts and enjoy the process. Thanks so much for hanging out and painting with me. Really grateful you guys came to do this. Please don't wait too long to do your next painting. Until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting but please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can and any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.